authenticity. Back to bearer instruments. They belong to the holder and are used just like physical money. The single most important thing about any bearer instrument, regardless of its form, is its authenticity. For example, if you have a $100 bill with a serial number of H4829310239 and come across another $100 bill that has the same serial number of H4829310239, one of them is a counterfeit. Now, which one? How much is your $100 worth now? $50? No. $0. You can't trust the dollar you're holding. A bearer instrument's value is a zero-sum game of confidence, absolute authenticity, or the extreme unlikelihood of being able to produce a convincing counterfeit is the name of the game. Where does this trust in authenticity, and how do we determine it? Well, that depends on the properties of the instrument. The journey from gold to bearer instrument. The authenticity of gold coins was initially determined dentally which at the time at evaluating coins was risking your gleaming smile as the dentist was also likely the town blacksmith. Anyway, a gold coin is not a bearer instrument because the coin itself has value. You could melt it down into a gold blob and its value to be the same. Because of this, gold coins were of great value in of themselves, but came with a lot of possession risk that often led to problems dwarfing the state of your dental health. It wasn't until the issuers of coins began plating rubbish materials with precious metals that their value was greater than their melted form. This was an interim step in the direction of full-on material substitution to make the coin by using low-valued metals and even paper to represent a blob of gold held by the issuer of coin. The bare instrument was born, well, kind of, meaning the notion of a token as a uh, bear instrument, representing values located somewhere else. Risk in using gold as currency could simply be the possession of them. For the bear instrument, the risk resided in determining authenticity when accepting it as payment for your labor or as an asset you're trying to sell. If a rubbish material coin or paper bill represented a certain quantity of gold held in the issuer's coffers, say for vaults, the bearer of the coin or bill could march right up to this institution and exchange the bearer instrument for the amount of gold it represented. This is often called the gold standard, which technically it's not. But regardless, this token scheme was the trust anchor underlying fiat currencies around the world in the early 1970s. The bearer of these instruments trusted that the institution that issued it had the gold to back it up. So all they had to worry about was that the instrument itself was authentic. Note, historically, minted coins were government-issued currency, and paper notes were bank or institutional-issued instruments. This was the norm until a sufficient number of crisis and fiduciary judgment days required for humanity to eventually learn that this was generally a bad idea. So, anyway, a good measure of the general trust in a currency is the length in which someone will go to thieve them from you instead of attempting to counterfeit it. Gold backing provided part of the trust equation representing value for bearer instruments. But what about authenticity? Mentors of coins and issuers of paper currency employ difficult to duplicate properties that could almost instantly calm any concern by its holder as to its authenticity. The molds or plates used to generate these instruments had fine detail that at the time of their issuance was difficult to duplicate in order to create an effective counterfeit at scale. Counterfeiters would experiment and eventually be able to create good enough instruments or just steal the molds or plates. This would then cause a new series of instruments to be created, moving the difficulty bar further out. This continues to this day all around the world. Determining authenticity wasn't just an issue to the general public, but to governments and the mentors they employed. The United Kingdom in the 12th century began regular inquisitions called the Trial of the Picks for the mentor to prove conformity to a jury of metallurgical assayers just in case they were skimming or creating extras. 
This too continues to this day. Perhaps the most interesting aspect of today's currencies is that they are not backed by gold, but trust in the backing government and authenticity of currency itself. This, to most, is magic. However, the authenticity challenge persists. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to physical money, which can be thought of as a type of token. So let's examine the properties and behavior of money.